Hello Desert Bearhawk fans, we're in the shop today. Gonna do a little process where we're gonna put these uh, these rib stiffeners. You remember these? I've been drilling and priming and cleaning those up for weeks. And if you remember in an earlier video, we index drilled those holes that you see right there. So that operation's already done and it makes this process go a lot faster. So what we need to do is we need to drill this rib and uh, Coleco in these stiffeners and then we're going to rivet them in place. So I made a little fixture kind of like I did with the nose rib with the two pins. There's one here and one here. And then I've got the um, toggle clamps that come down and just kind of lock it down flat. Um, doesn't sit perfectly flat. I have to kind of hold it over on this end because I only have two toggle clamps. I might get a couple more today. But uh, for now I got two so I just kind of hold that flat with my hands. But nothing can move now. And then um, then we're going to drill and put these stiffeners in their respective spots like that. So those who've been following my, my videos know that I like to keep everything even and I like to have a way where I can do it over and over again and, and get the same results as the time before so everything turns out to be just like everything else the same. And uh, that, which is really good. Uh, when you're building a wing and you want the wing to be straight and true and not have a bunch of ripples and stuff in it. So, <clears throat> being that I used to build a lot of model airplanes, probably still will, I have a bunch of balsa wood laying around the shop. These are some uh, quarter by half inch sticks. And I just made some, some uh, fixtures, I, I don't want to call them jigs per se, but just some alignment tools to help me rapidly put these stiffeners in. So I'm going to go through the process of doing it. So the first one here it's got this 90 degree back on it and two arms and it butts right up against this edge of the rib and hopefully you can see it there so I just slide that up against there like that and now those two arms stick out and I just kind of line up this rib right here and you know I take a I take my joggle block that heavy metal block and I kind of butt it up against that and help hold it in position slide it where I want it then I uh, then I visually align the stiffeners up and down, just to try to separate the um, the distance between the two flanges here. Kind of eyeballing that. I don't know that's super mission critical that they be in the exact same spot vertically. And once I get them lined up, and I'm whole, you know, the rib is bowing up a little bit more. I'll throw some extra weight on there, like this bucking bar. I'll throw right here. It just kind of helps hold it flat, and I'll hold it flat with my hands too. Take my air drill. Make sure everything's lined up here. It's nice and nice and tight. Just knocked it all loose, so that worked out pretty good. Get her all lined up here. Nice and tight. Hold down with my finger. Make sure everything's nice and flat. And that's it. Fill the first hole. Blow the debris out of there. Take a Coleco. We talked about Colecos before, so everyone should know what those are. And put that in that hole. Lock it down. Now I'll set this up again. Try to get it as even as I can. And because uh, I can't, because the, um, the the fixture here, the the alignment tool is covering up the bottom hole. I'm just going to skip up one hole, holding it down flat, grab my drill, hit it, done. Now I'm done with that part. Don't need it anymore. I'm going to have to get me a separate airline over here. It gets kind of a pain to keep changing. And Coleco this one down. Again, still trying to hold this as flat as I can. I'm going to drill this hole. This hole, and we're done. I'm gonna have to lift through the compressor because it's gonna come on a couple of times, I think. And just for the heck of it, I'll throw an extra one in there. I don't need it, it's kind of overkill. All right, so that one's done. Now I take my next alignment tool, slide it in position. Throw my little weight block on top just to hold it down. 
line everything up vertically where I want it. Looks pretty good. Hold it down with my finger. Go away. Okay, I'm done with that tool. Click it in. As you can see, once I took the time to make the alignment tools, the rest of this stuff goes really fast. If I didn't have to keep changing air hoses, it'd be even faster. That one's in. Now this middle one is a little more tricky because these toggles are in the way. So I gotta kind of hold everything down by hand. Well, no system's perfect, I guess. But it gets me pretty close and it helps me do it fast, so. What I do is I kind of hold this down with my hand here. I got my vertical adjustments. Throw this on there just to keep that flat. Hold it down with my hand. I'm going to drill this one. Clean this stuff up. Hopefully, you can hear me better now that that compressor's not running away. Throw that in there like so. And we'll bring it over here. We'll realign the bottom. There's just enough of a of a space there that I can uh, get in there with the, with the drill. Like so. Thing looks good. There we are. Now interesting to note that just about everywhere on the plans, Bob Barrows, the designer, has given you a 30 second one thirty-second of an inch tolerance almost everywhere. If you look at what the tolerance is, it'll say one thirty-second, especially on these hand-formed ribs. Definitely have quite a bit of tolerance there. And yeah, these are going to be off slightly, maybe by a sixty-fourth or a sixteenth, sixty-fourth or a thirty-second, but not much more than that. It's pretty. Uh, it's pretty close, and of course. The exact location of these parts is not super mission critical, um, especially on these ribs now. On a couple of ribs, this stiffener actually is an attach piece for a uh, for what they call a false spar. That kind of, if you can imagine, this area here between here and here is going to be where the fuel tank sits. So there's going to be a false spar that sits in there, and we've got some of these. Uh, these short ribs, <laughs> short ribs, some of these ribs are basically this right there and they're gonna sit along the spar along the side there and they're gonna join up to that false rib right here. So on certain ribs this piece won't be a stiffener, it'll be an attach point so it'll be a different a different scenario for in here but uh, that's after the ribs, well, I'm going to install this one stiffener on this rib, on the ribs that need them, once the ribs are in the, jigged up in the spar and everything's lined up properly. So for now, all these flanged ribs, they get, they get these stiffeners just like this. So it's easy to just kind of knock them out and press on. So we'll just get, well, I'll grab the center hole, hold this down flat, and throw a Coleco in there for good measure. Kind of overdo it with these Calicos. I'm sure that at some point the novelty of putting these things in and out will wear off on me. But for now, and there you go. You know, and another thing too, so I read a post online about guys who are drilling a lot of holes in their parts, and they've they've kind of switched to a drill like uh, you know, like a cordless drill like this giant monster 18 volt DeWalt weighs about gosh I bet you that weighs every bit of six to eight pounds if not ten pounds 
And the reason they did that was is they didn't like their compressor running all the time. I have a fairly large compressor, but moreover, when you're drilling sheet metal, aluminum, you want to have a high speed drill. And that's what these pneumatic drills are. They're very high speed. And that's the proper way to drill the holes. If you're drilling in the wood, slower speed. The harder the material, the higher the speed you want, you know, with this aluminum. So that's why I use an air drill and I have to suffer through that compressor kicking on. I actually don't mind it, I kind of like it, but when we're shooting videos it does, it does make kind of a racket for you guys out there trying to watch it. Alright, so finally, we got uh, the last one to go in. I'll just kind of visually align it vertically. I'm going to throw this bar on there to hold it in place. I'm going to take this. And I'm pretty solid on this. I feel good, so I'm going to hit the other hole. All right. Now we're done with that tool. So for about a dollar's worth of balsa wood, I was able to make some fixtures. And when I do the when I do the rib, the this, these are all um, left-hand ribs. When I do the right-hand ribs, I'll be able to use the same tool. I'll just be working from this side, going that way, and uh, won't be no big deal. It'll all be good. Make things nice and fast and easy for me. So we'll Coleco in this last one here. Stuff bailing off the bench. I don't know about you guys, but when I when I work on stuff, I slowly clutter myself into oblivion. And then uh, at some point I have a mental breakdown and I have to stop and clean everything up. We're getting kind of close to that now. Alright, so I'll hold this down flat. Shoot that one hole, hit it with the Coleco, just to make sure everything is, because part of the part of the reason for these stiffeners is to help flatten this, well, that's probably not true. I don't think the intent is to help flatten this rib out, I think it's to give it some compressibility and some strength, but a side benefit of it is it actually helps take some of the curvature that the manufacturing process puts in and helps take it back out. So you want to make sure you're holding this thing flat when you drill, so you're pushing that curvature out as best you can. Okay. Here we go. And just like that, we've got another one drilled. Ready to come over to the rivet squeezer, which I put a 10 second video up for that. I think you might have seen it. But in the end, this is what we get. They're all on there. Everything's drilled, and we're ready to start squeezing our rivets in these holes and call this part complete until it's ready to go on the spar. So that's about it from the shop today. Hope you enjoyed the video, a little insight as to what we're doing here, and uh, we will see you next time in the shop.